Alright guys, subscribe back again today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far with the World Series of Warzone coming around again. Scump is targeting the back-to-back -back victories in the solo YOLO that's coming up later on today, but he's not so confident in his trio's chances, given the fact that Tim the Tapman and unfortunately Methods are on the team from his perspective at least. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. Loads of new subs the last couple of days. Love to see it. Let's crack straight on. Plenty to discuss. Firstly, on the roster mania side briefly, we saw a yesterday that Skies was released by the Mutineers. Again, I do feel like a lot of wasted potential really with Skies and Awakening both the last couple of years with Florida. I think it was relatively clear from early on even in the Cold War days the Skies and Awakening weren't really going to work perfectly together. They'd made it work in 5v5 in Modern Warfare but in Cold War when one of them went off one of them didn't and it was an issue in fairness that's carried through the last couple of years. I guess they hoped that Awakening on an SMG in Vanguard would be the saviour of the roster. Wasn't to be these guys are going to go elsewhere. Awakening, we believe, to Boston. Skies, we believe, to the New York Subliners. But yes, Awakening is officially gone from the Florida Mutineers roster. They are looking for new opportunities because we have seen in the past teams like London and others, they release their players. For example, after, I guess it was Cold War, right? For example, Paris Legion, they released their entire roster, but then re-signed Donny Temp. So, like, sometimes they will um, yeah, release players technically and then re-sign them for lesser deals or whatever. But in this case, Awakening is going to get more money elsewhere. And the tweet is very clear that Awakening isn't coming back to Florida anytime soon. Obviously when they picked him up, what a great spot that was from Florida Mutineers when they picked this guy up firstly halfway through the Modern Warfare season was incredibly impactful to their success. They've done a kind of good job Mutineers like they've scouted some good talents and they've picked some good players up. Whether that'll be the case this season, who knows, but they're certainly going to need to if they want to compete. This just one more thing here that was pointed out by the flank from Skies, just kind of confirming beyond a reasonable doubt that he will be going the way of the New York Sublan as he changed his bio to some rather familiar scenery in the background here. So yeah, Skies to New York, Awakening to Boston. Pretty fun to see those two match up next season if and when that does indeed occur. Let's talk about this Warzone stuff because last night the World Series of Warzone was going on in Europe. Tonight it's going on in the North American side. And um, I don't know, obviously we've had all the Warzone versus CDL drama the last couple of weeks. The likes of Biffle versus Method and all the other, you know, CDL pros, Warzone pros getting involved in some 1v1s. Warzone itself, of course, is more Warzone players' territory. But in fairness, many Many of the Warzone pros nowadays, the successful ones, are quite largely retired CDL pros, or at least were in the CWL or CDL or just around the COD competitive scene for quite some time. We'll see them in a second actually from the European side. So basically the trios happens and then like honestly it was a bit of a mess to watch, I'm not gonna lie. You've got these like trucks driving around, you've got these attack choppers in the air, the riot shields are coming through, like it's a bit of a messy game to be honest, but um, you know, still like the, one of the clips that was coming out here, people were looking at it. I don't know, I'm really interested in the winners. Like actually watching the thing is kind of painful to do but um, I mean yeah we look at this guy he's camping in the bush it is just what it is it's Battle Royale baby but anyway the World Series of Warzone in Europe goes down this is the top 10 overall KDs some of these names of course you guys may well know and those who have been around the scene for a few years will know Wartex Italian player I believe who was briefly in the Heretics roster right at the end of Black Ops 4 Black Ops 4 Heretics was such a fun team to watch they were at times you know pushing a top 6 team in the game top 8 top 6 they were pretty good at the end of the game I think they dropped Suck they brought Wartex in and um, he certainly had some moments. Now he's a Warzone guy and he had some good success last night. So yeah, Wartex, Blade, two of the former challenger players won the trios last night and then Blade went on to win 100k in the solo YOLO. So he won that one. I don't, still don't know why they call it solo. I don't really understand it. But anyway, yeah, there was these guys, Blade and Wartex, Savi Ultra and co that uh, won the European final. So tonight we'll get the winners in the North American side. And just to mention this, right, because this could arguably be a W for the COD seed over the Warzone seed. If you look at it from this perspective because um, I mean I don't really think this is intended to roast blades but you can guys can see right here from back in modern warfare when these guys are actually playing together in the kind of challenger stuff so blade and vortex they're playing with each other challengers cups the challengers opens not really getting the best results so you know he was obviously not having the greatest time in the challenger side for the CDL that was trying to make it and I guess and then decided okay let's go down the warzone route and make that work right so I mean yeah just interesting to note really that some of these guys had either decent success in the kind of competitive 
COD landscape. Went to Warzone and probably, well, at least now, based on these results, have had slightly more success. Gunless was watching this thinking, damn, this is honestly an absolute mess. If I get double stunned for 100k, my setup would not be standing still. So I think Gunless doesn't have to worry about that because I don't believe he's playing in the North American one. Coming out very soon indeed. And yeah, this Blaze guy, as we just saw, he played, played a lot of challenges back in the Modern Warfare days and then made the switch to Warzone. And that is really the, the unfortunate thing about the way the competitive COD landscape is nowadays in that if you were an up-and-coming player, like, why would you play challenges? If you're a guy like Blade or Waltex or whatever that's trying to get back in the Pro League or trying to be a competitive Call of Duty player, why would you try and go down the CDL route, right? It makes way more sense, I think, to go down the route of actually trying to become a Warzone pro because you can make more money more easily. You've got the prize money for the tourneys. You've also got the streaming revenue and stuff. And, like, the way the challenges ecosystem works doesn't necessarily encourage players that are talented to actually try and make it into the CDL rather than being a Warzone pro. So it's kind of unfortunate the way it's gone, I think. But, you know, still, it does mean we get entertaining tournaments like this. And just to mention this, if you guys haven't seen this clip from a few years ago, it will um, certainly boggle the mind to some extent. This is Heretics versus Luminosity, I believe round one of the playoffs at Miami back in um, back in Black Ops 4, of course. Heretics played LG, winners round one. They were down 5-3 in the first round. And this is honestly one of the hypest plays of the season, to be honest. Like, I think it's one of the best clips, because this is such an impossible one versus two. Like, it's Skies and Formal on the other side. 5-3 down you are. You've got to win this round to stay. Keep your hopes alive in this match and formal is looking at you with an icr and trying to like take you out Wartex slides out strafes him with the sorg gets the shot punch onto the seconds like what a fantastic clip that was Wartex, the guy who just won the world series of warzone trios and there was some reaction to this as well from even uh, sky says i trusted you formal because formal was meant to have his shots but your know, Wartex completely finessed him don't often see formal missing shots like that but i mean yeah the strafe on the sorg was pretty unprecedented i think this is only the stock one sorg at the end but yeah Wartex is making plays this entire map in the end though i believe the next round of this was the slack slam when he got the three piece with the slam and then they ended up winning it anyway knocking heretics to the losers bracket i suppose but um yeah formal was reacting tj slacks jg mid gun but i could tell the slack comes back as well so you know good times i think in call of duty history i just really miss having the kind of spanish team with Wartex and all these guys on the roster that was you know having great success or at least putting up a good fight and we don't really get that nowadays unfortunately and some of these guys have gone down the war zone route which is kind of sad because they could still be in the cdl if there was a spanish team or i suppose more international representation. These then are some of the scores coming up today in the North American World Series of Warzone. This is kind of, well, of course, Doug's got a team, Crowder, TP, but also this one, Scump Methods, Tim the Tapman. So we believe that Scump will be getting involved in the solo YOLO, right? I guess it's just like 100 players or however many they have, down to one that he won last year, of course. Now, like, going back to back would be nigh on impossible, you would imagine here. Like, just the amount of randomness involved in even getting to that point, and also the fact that Scump doesn't even play this game. But in fairness, last year he didn't even play Warzone and hopped on and managed to win the entire thing in impressive fashion of course beating Aiden in that one versus one to win it so you know this year who knows if he can go back to back that like I don't think it's gonna happen like the odds would be just astronomically against him but um, unfortunately the 3v3 wins or the trios wins might not be on the cards when you've got teams like Tommy Armand and Noobs and that and then you know you've got Zinn and Tim the Tam and of course Scump and Zinn aren't exactly particularly well versed with this version of the game then the optimism might not necessarily be there but I mean still look like, Aiden's kind of waiting for the 2b and he says he's going to get a tattoo of various things if Scump happens to win either the solo YOLO tomorrow. He actually went on to say like um, that he's going to get a, a rather well a slightly different tattoo. But yeah, Aiden reckons that if he wins either the solos or the trios, then Aiden's going to get a certain tattoo. Looks like I'm pulling out of the, di well, pulling out the Diamati for one last ride. It's like, um, I think the Diamati was like the pistol, of course, that Scump used to pretty good success last season in last season's solo YOLO. I, I don't know if this year it's in the meta. I think there might be other pistols than now in the meta. I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comment section below. But uh, yeah, Scump's got to make sure he's got the meta. And this is the funny thing, right? Scump won last year without really knowing what the meta was. And um, I think he's going to have to find it out this year rather quickly if he wants to have a chance to go for the two peats. And I'll just share this quickly, pair actually, as well, of when um, Aiden kind of says another potential tattoo he might get if things go Scump's way this evening. If Scump wins, I will literally... If they win, I will literally get a tattoo. I'm going to say this on stream now. I will get a tattoo that says Scump is the best Warzone player. <laughs> if they win. But Scump believes if he is going to win anything, it's probably going to have to be the solo one. Because as Scump says here, if we win the trio event, I will literally never touch Cod again. Expecting that that is rather not going to be the case. And um, as uh, well, j Dog says here, have you even played Caldera in the last couple of months? He's like, no, EZW still says Tim. Tim, I'm going to need to carry out of you. And Zid is worse somehow, right? 
the straight up roasting Zinni, saying, okay, to the tap man, right? Like, compared to the average Warzone player, he's going to be, like, definitely way above average. But compared to the lobby that they're going to be going into, like, uh, Tim might have a bit of a hard time, right? So, Scum's needing some sort of carry out of Tim, and he's actually reckoned that Method is even worse. And actually, I'll share a clip from last night where these guys were kind of watching, getting a bit of preparation in, and Scump had a rather good game. Method struggled a fair bit, and Scump's like, look, I'm going to need to either hard carry these boys really hard indeed, or Zinn and Tim are going to have to turn up big time. Need bullets? Uh, to 3v2. Jesus Christ, dude. Jesus Murphy! Jesus Christ. Get some Ws. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a... You're such a pussy. You are such a pussy. Jesus. 24. Bro, that was insane. So do you think these boys have any chance tonight? It seems rather unlikely given the other Warzone guys in there. But as we saw in the European side, it was at least a couple of like former CWL, CDL, like a challenger guys that ended up making the switch and winning. So who knows? You can't rule it out. Scum won at least the solo, dolo, yolo, whatever it's called thing last year. And he's going to try and do it again. Reckon he's going to get king tatted on his left cheek if he manages to win this one. Like um, the formal actually says, you know, can you send me some ideas on what this might particularly look like? So yes, thought this is pretty funny in fairness. Scum getting ready to go. Will he actually deliver? the good too really knows and even though Juki's records that he's getting scum on his left cheek with a crown above it if he wins so everyone is getting ready for what could be an absolute feasting session tonight for scum for the boys but um you know obviously there's many other good teams in here as well so these are some of the invited squads there's also some qualifier teams that will also be very good indeed but um you know rated of course well plenty of former CDL guys who have become warzone players are now in here looking to make an app in and scump's team on paper maybe isn't the strongest so he's probably gonna have to hope for that solo yolo Dolo, whatever it's called, victory, to try and make it happen again for the second year back-to-back. -back. So, pretty interesting stuff. Just wanted to mention this real quick before we close out the video, actually, because, uh, you know, Ben Jenison came out with a video discussing his ideas on the challenger side and exactly how, like, you know, we could help it grow to a certain extent. And even the rotation points out, I thought, was kind of incredible that um, out of the COD League accounts, just under 1% of the tweets that they've ever done have actually been about challenges, right? Like, one in every, less than a one in every hundred tweets is about challenges. Like, they barely mention it at all. And, um, and actually, what was mentioned here as uh, Ben Genesim says the MLG Twitter account is this sitting there right now completely unused really because it used to be kind of owned by the guys who now run Esports Engine and Activision own MLG but they just don't use the brand for anything at all nowadays and he's like look at us two million followers who could probably use that to help to a certain extent and you know the idea being have an open bracket at every major have multiple prom events throughout the season actually expand the elite program to multiple regions make the champs a little bit of a bigger event so I'm sure there's way better things they could do with challenges going forwards but we would like to get into a world where players that are kind of grinding Call of Duty and want to make it as a player actually feel like they can play the challenger scene and make that rewarding rather than just becoming a Warzone guy because that's the way a lot of the guys will go nowadays and you can't exactly blame them. So very much enjoy to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. It's also YouTube gods. That's a good video. I'd also like you should see it as well. And hope grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care and I'll see you next time. Dog. So he's going to spot one, and then he's going to go away. So what he's playing for right now is that frag grenade. Yep, exactly skies. What he's gonna do. skies is the one that's got to hit. I think it's on Skies. Skies able to get away, just not cooked quite long enough. 20 seconds to work with. He's going to have to go for him. Oh, he ripped it! Oh, he ripped it! Oh, he ripped it! What is that? What is that? Good boy, Tex! Oh, my! Oh, <laughs> <laughs>